We're here this morning, um, Mesquite Citizen Journal. I'm Barbara Ellistad, and we're with Crescent Hardy, who is the uh, Republican candidate for the Assembly District 19 in the upcoming election in November. About, what, 40 days or so till the decision is made? About six weeks. Six weeks, yeah. Um, so we're going to uh, interview you today. We're going to interview your competitor next Wednesday. Um, and then people will be able to decide for themselves um, which candidate they want to put their trust into. So let's just get started. Um, you are in some ways the incumbent in this district. Um, you had your freshman year in the assembly um, in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you kind of have a record, I guess, that we can uh, look back at and evaluate you a little bit. What do you think were the best things that you did in your freshman um, year in the Assembly? I think the best things that happened was I had an opportunity to be a part of uh, leadership and uh, responsibilities. Uh, had an opportunity to work with the, in the Ways and Means, which uh, most generally is uh, to people that have been there a lot longer than I have, so as a freshman it was an opportunity. How do you think you got that position as a freshman since that's a bit unusual? It is unusual. Uh, I was told that uh, by some of the leader, upper leadership that I had the, the personality, I guess, and the strength to be able to uh, deal with some of the issues. My business background they felt like was uh, something that would benefit the uh, ways and means and also in commerce okay. and labor. Okay. So, well, so um, what do you think some of the um, things were that you didn't uh, succeed as well as you wanted to? One of my big issues is, is been well publicized is prevailing wage. Uh, prevailing wage, I believe, is uh, basically a, a law that functions exactly the way it was set up, but it was set up incorrectly. There needs to be a major reform. Uh, I have no problem with the wage preventing wage going for the the money that goes in the employee's pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, my issue is, is is I shouldn't be paying into unions okay. because I am I am an open shop. I'm not a union shop. Eighty five percent of this state is open shop. Talk about explain the prevailing wage law a little bit for those people who may not be familiar with it. Okay, prevailing prevailing wage is require. It's a it's kind of like it follows off the uh, the. Davis Bacon wage that was established okay. uh, in recent uh, or in the past in the twenties, yeah, I believe that was a long time ago. Long time ago, it was uh, put in there. It actually was to uh, at the time was to uh, discriminate against blacks is what it was put in place for. Okay, um, and, and the now the uh, what has happened is it's uh, gone through and everything that happens within a union, everything within the collective bargaining unit, uh -huh. uh, their dues. Uh, uh, training, the whole nine yards goes back to uh, these union benefits. One of my big issues is is that I pay health insurance on my employees. Uh -huh. It costs me anywhere from $1.40 to $1.80 an hour for my employees to have a good health benefit program and, and uh, death benefit program. Okay. It's as good as probably anything they've got out there. Why does the trades where they're self-insured cost them anywhere from 6 to $12 an hour uh, for their same package? Okay. Uh, That's kind of a, a big difference. Okay. Every since 2006, every year, we've had probably close to a 9% increase in prevailing wage in this down, down economy. Uh, and the way it's evaluated is what happens. The unions pay for, to have their numbers turned into the labor commissioner for review. Uh, I don't get that same benefit as an uh, individual, mm -hmm. which... It, I'm going to show less money, so it's got, com, continually gone up. And we all know in the rural con, uh, communities, it doesn't cost that kind of money. And people can work for less than what is out there. But the the salaries in in uh, the state of Nevada for for union wages are anywhere from 45 to 70 bucks an hour with the with the benefit package. Yeah. And in where in Maricopa County, Utah, right here, uh, we're closer to probably $25, $30 an hour for the same type of, uh, let the competition take its place. Okay. My people all live good, uh, 
are buying new homes and living in a quality of life. So to tell me it's a it's a money issue, which the the they continue to say it's a puts more money in people's pockets. I disagree with that. The more opportunity that communities have a chance, like the city of Mesquite, mm -hmm. to build uh, projects. If I can get two projects for the price of one, or even a, one, of the statistics show that almost 25% more projects. I, in my prevailing wage law, I wanted to exempt schools. Do we care about the students? Do we care about children? We talk about uh, schools and how they're falling down around us. You know, we've spent $4.7 billion in Clark County, in the school, in the state, pardon me, for, for schools. Uh, if we truly care, the Ohio study that was recently done a, a couple of years ago or, uh, was it proved that they could do them for 15 percent less, and that was kind of a uh, little different situation. And it's even they make less money than we have here. So I believe that we could actually spend, build 25 percent more schools out of that 4.7 billion dollars if we weren't paying if we weren't wage. paying preventing okay. wage. Let competition take the route that it needs to go. Okay. Well, you just talked about education, and that's on the list of questions. So um, you've gotten a lot of criticism because people say that you were against increasing funding for K-12 through education in your um, freshman year in the assembly. Um, I've heard you say otherwise. So now's your chance to explain okay, I'm, your, your I'm not stance. Against, I am not against education. Right. Okay. I'm against the same old system. You can't keep throwing money against the, the thing that's proven that it hasn't worked. Okay. People talk about that education has, uh, is underfunded in the state of Nevada, which is a blatant lie. state of Nevada, yes, only pays $5,200 per student. Okay. But what people don't understand is that Education Nevada gets also money from other things that other states don't have, mining and other places. It's closer to eleven to twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 per student per year. You know, we talk about that and the, the, uh, the uh, opponents of more money continue to talk about how they're being ripped off. Folks, good teachers up there have the same desire that I do. They want to be able to teach their classes, but they can't, we can't continue to have bad teachers, bad administrators uh, get away with what's happening. Okay. And until... What do you want to do different? I want to have a, a, an incentive type pay or something. Do what Florida's done. I'm not a. I don't know how to invent the wheel of it, but there's other places it's worked. You follow the the maps that have worked other places, and you try to install those those uh, type of programs. We tried last session to do some of that. We accomplished a lot. They said, that's what they tell us. I, I would. I didn't feel like it was any anywhere close. To be right honest with you. Yeah. Uh, to what we wanted, the vouchers. You know, we talk about. Uh, People that are can't afford to go to big better schools. Right. Well, this voucher program, the money follows the students. Unions hate that. They don't want that money. They want it to stay within the the public system, to where they have control of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the private sector has proven time and time again they do a better job than than the public sector. And let's let's give it that opportunity. At least look at it. Uh, you know, in 2000, uh, back 12 years. You know, it's been 14 years ago now. Uh, Florida was in the same spot that we are. We were right on the same playing field. Why is it that they went to the top of the nation on the charts and they, they had major public school program, now they've gone to a major ch charter school program and they've gone to the top of the system and we've still continue to decline. So. Okay. We have a uh, property tax increase on the November, ba November ballot um, to get some more money for school building in Clark County. How do you feel about that issue? I think that's a choice of the people. It's going to come out of their pocket. Let them decide that. Okay. I know where I'll vote on that. Where will you vote? That's, that's a booth <laughs> issue. Okay. <laughs>